we see it as evident that Pilate really didn't want to know the truth when he asked Jesus what is truth. At the first opportunity to rid himself of the responsibility, he passed it on to Herod. Verse 8, And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Herod was not interested in the truth either. He just wanted to be entertained by Jesus. And there are many in the churches today who only want to be entertained. They don't want to be challenged by the truth. Verse 9, Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Jesus answered him nothing because Herod was not interested in the truth. And Jesus has only come to bear witness to the truth, as we just read in John 18:37. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. None of these people cared at all to hear the truth and the light that the truth provides us. John 3, 19 to 21. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Here are all these people <clears throat> who are mocking and beating the only one who has the power to set them free from their darkness. Acts 26, 15-18 and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. When people recognize that they are searching for the truth and need answers, they will be willing to humble themselves and ask Jesus, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord will never abandon the hungry heart. And then we will be able to say along with Peter with all certainty, Thou art the Christ the son of the living God. So in Acts 26, you know, Jesus was speaking to Paul when he when he was saying all of this. You know, Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? And, and he answered, I'm Jesus. And he says, I've appeared unto thee for this purpose to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen of those things which I will appear unto thee. And that's us. We are here bearing witness to everything that we have learned of the Lord and what he's going to continue to reveal to us and teach us about. That's what our purpose is here, in order to open the eyes of people and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive the same forgiveness of sins that we have for, you know, received and, uh, and to be a partaker of the inheritance among those which are sanctified by faith. That's Jesus' purpose. That's our purpose. It's knowing who, who is he? You know, is he the king of the Jews? He's more than the king of the Jews. He's the king of kings. He is the Lord of the universe. He is the almighty. He is the Christ, the son of the living God. And we all know it for a fact. And we just seek the Lord, ask him to help us live it out every day and, and, Live out that truth, the truth, <laughs> not a truth, not, you know, it's the truth. Okay, well, that's it for tonight. Does anybody want to add anything before we wrap it up here? Okay. No scriptures that anybody were quickened to them or anything they'd like to comment on. Okay, well, Ken opened us up tonight with prayer, so who would like to close us in prayer tonight? 
Okay, I, I will. Perfect. Go ahead, Brother Randy. Okay, uh, Lord, we thank you for the study of your word. I that you will quicken us to our spirit and our heart, and, and that you will help us to uh, live, live uh, victorious and be a light to those that are in darkness. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Randy. Amen. That is a heartfelt prayer. That God help us to be a witness. You know, help us. Because without Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So we definitely need his help. No doubt about it. Okay. Well, praise the living God. Um, well, continue. Please continue to pray for me and uh, ask that the Lord would put in my heart whatever it is that he wants us to share uh, to share in next week. So I do covet your prayers. And, and pray for everyone that the Lord reminds you of, both on this call or other people. You know, there's times that, that I haven't thought about a certain person sometimes in 30 or 40 years. And all of a sudden I think about them. And I have to catch myself because it's like I, I don't realize it. And I, I oh, Lord. There's a reason why I'm thinking about this person all of a sudden. Stop and pray. It matters. It, it, it really does. So uh, let's be faithful to the Lord. I don't know how it all works. I mean, I really don't. But God has ordained it to be such, and so we're going to do it. We're going to follow him because he says to do these things, even though we may not fully understand why or whatever. All right. Well, anyway, brethren, pray for me. Pray for one another. And uh, God willing, we'll get together again next week, next Thursday. God no, will. Recording. I'm sorry. Oh, the rec man, thank you for, for reminding me. Good grief. 